This week, we're ready to put a few house hunting rules to the test. I'm sure they'll listen to you, Phil. Know what you want from the outset. I want to keep those windows. It's not actually ours yet. <laughs> Don't dilly-dally with decision-making. I'm not 100% at the moment. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Expect the unexpected. <laughs> that is a shock. And know when it's time to walk away. Consider myself told. <laughs> Oh, go and get another job. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this week we're searching in Manchester, where it's all about postcodes and plot sizes. Do you head north and bag more space, or do you park in the pricier parts in the south? Metropolitan Manchester. A city that saw house prices rocket by a jaw-dropping 21% last year, faster than anywhere else in the UK. Even London. Demand for properties in the popular southern suburbs means house prices are high and there's very little stock. However, in the historic mill towns to the north, prices are less inflated and some areas have seen the market drop. So we'd better get on the case for our two sets of house hunters, both on the move to gain more space. I'm searching south for couples Sarah and Claude, who've outgrown their Bijou City rental and want to buy for the first time. I'm much better at saving money than Claude is. He spends a hell of a lot more than I do. Completely unfair. <laughs> no, it really isn't. Meanwhile, my pair, Catherine and Andrew, are racing to find their dream home in the up-and-coming northern and eastern parts of town. It was on the slopes that snowy sparks started to fly for these adrenaline junkies. You did look pretty hot in your skiing outfit, to be fair. <laughs> After four high-octane years together, electrical engineer Andrew and marketing analyst Catherine now keep active with beloved rescue dog Dexter. Oh, you went to bar. He basically rules our existence. <laughs> he does. He really does. The happy trio live in a bungalow inherited from Andrew's great aunt. They got stuck in and gave the place a full facelift. Basically, the, the walls and the roof is the same. <laughs> Everything else is, is different and simple. But it wasn't all plain sailing. It was a very difficult period. It was, it was under pressure 14 hour days, 16 hour days for We didn't spend seven much time together. It got to the point, I was like, can we please stop talking about the bungalow? And here we are wanting to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Undeterred by a bit of hard graft, they're going to rent their pristine pad out and search for a new but bigger place to do up and turn into their next home together. They aren't fixed on a specific spot, but Catherine does have some key criteria. Being in an area where you feel safe as well is important to me. Ideally, I'd like to be quite near the countryside, going out for long walks with the dog and just being able to get lost at the weekend. Over the last few months, the pair have lost out on some cracking opportunities. No thanks to hard-nosed developers snapping up the best bargains around. Tough task. I know exactly who these two need to help them. Why aren't you staying on in the bungalow? <laughs> bursting at the seams. The attic, despite being boarded out, is absolutely bursting. The garage is bursting. What is it bursting with? With my tools, we've got three, four pair of skis, five pair of ski boots. You are going to chuck some stuff out, aren't you? The, the, there are other factors to consider, <laughs> aren't there? So, um... I'm just getting down to brass tacks, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to find I was just searching for house to house and ski boots. There, no. there are other things to fit in yeah. as well. So, why do you think you haven't found something? We've had on a couple of occasions where we've had viewings lined up and we've been quite excited. And then the day before or that morning even, we've had the phone call, the place is under offer now, because it's just, it's just moving so fast. It is moving fast. And you're up against professional developers who can move quicker and act faster than you can. That's exactly right, yeah. So, we need help. That is why I'm here. Developers of Manchester, beware. Indeed. I'm ready to sniff out the ripest renovation jobs around. These two have 185 grand for the house, keeping back 15,000 for renovations. They ideally want three bedrooms, a decent-sized private garden for Pooch Dexter and the potential to create an open-plan living space. Not fixed on area, Andrew would like to be near the M60 for his commute, 
so I'll be focusing my search north and east of the city, where their money will go further than in the south. It may be a large patch, but I'm competing with developers. We're also on the lookout for prime properties. You're not the only one with a property mountain to climb. My couple are also first-time buyers, but strategy analyst Sarah and accountant Claude are set on the pricey properties south of the city. They're a pair who don't hang about. Within months of love blossoming, Sarah moved into Claude's rented bachelor pad in the heart of Manchester. Their flat's absolutely tiny. It's a one-bed flat for the two of us, so that's been a bit of a struggle. I like things to be very neat and tidy, and around the flat there's lots of things that are left out. Things on top of the wardrobe, I've got to put the golf clubs in the bedroom. So that's why we're looking for to get some space. Somewhere to put your shoes. <laughs> some rooms. <laughs> they may be first-time buyers in their 20s, but the pair want to jump a few rungs of the property ladder. I think we're looking for a three-bed semi-detached house. Somewhere where we've got enough room to bring people around, so a good-sized dining room would be nice. Ideally, a bigger kitchen. That's always been the centre of the home for me. And close to the tram stops as well for work. It'll be quite useful. Got that, Phil? Yes, it's a big ask. Especially as during their seven-month search near Pricey Didsbury, they've been outbid on two houses. But it's not just the expensive market that's a stumbling block. I'm definitely more head. Sarah's more definitely heart. more heart, yeah. Working in finance, it makes me more cautious. Whereas I think Sarah sees a nice kitchen or some nice decor and <laughs> household. You sound so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> fluffy may not be a bad thing, Sarah, because I'm worried a market this hard could bring you both down to earth with a bump. One of the major building societies I, I was just reading a, a published a report saying that Manchester is the most active, busy market in terms of price rises than any other city in the UK. Yeah, this is it. So you ring, even if they come up on a Thursday, you ring and all the viewings are booked for Saturday and then it's sealed bids on the Monday. Mm. So it, <laughs> it's, it's a, a tough stuck, market. Though. You know, describe the ideal house. I've lived in flats the last six years, um, so I'm pretty adamant that I don't want to be surrounded by lots of people anymore. Um, so for that reason, I don't want to live in a terrace. OK, so, so Didsbury is the priority? I would say that's, yeah. yeah. Um, it's quite an up-and-coming sort of area. It's good for young professionals. There's lots it's of cars up and in come. <laughs> it's up and come. Just <laughs> it seems to me there's quite a lot of um, constraints to the search. Uh, are you realistic, given what the market's been doing? I think we can find what we're looking for for the budget we've got. Well, you haven't managed it yet, which is <laughs> which is why you've called me. <laughs> and this search isn't going to be a walk in the park, even for a hardened professional. For their 250 grand, Sarah and Claude would love a semi-detached house with a little character. They're hungry for a generous portion of entertaining space, including a kitchen diner. Plus three bedrooms. But with their hearts set on Didsbury, one of South Manchester's most sought-after suburbs, my biggest challenge might be area. So I think I'll need to expand their postcode horizons to get them the house they say they want. Well, at least you're not trying to pip eagle-eyed developers to the post. For me, there's not going to be a lot to look at. I just need to find the one thing which the builder hasn't got there first. Um, I, don't, I don't quite know what I'm going to do because my brief is so unrealistic now and they're convinced that it's not. The area's going to have yeah, to stretch. Yeah, but I don't think the area is that fixed. I think that's the extraordinary thing about Manchester. That a lot of people are fixed on one area when there are all sorts of good yeah. other areas. Yeah, yeah you're right. I think, I, think, I think this week it's not about location, location, location. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my two, Sarah and Claude, don't agree with you on that, Kirsty, and that leaves me with a tricky search in their number one spot, Didsbury. I want to start by showing them what they can afford here, and the first house I've found is just a mile away from the popular Burton Road. I'm offering this young pair the vibrant location and lifestyle they're after. But that means compromising on character and space. And how's that going to go down? It is this house here. Oh. Semi-detached, 1930s. First impressions are, it looks quite nice. nice. Yeah. Good. It's a nice little road. <laughs> I'm glad Claude's seeing the beauty in small things, because behind closed doors, there are the three bedrooms these two want and a lovely garden. But there's just one reception room. And to create the hub of the home that Sarah craves, they'd need to extend the kitchen. But if they can handle all that, despite being in dear Didsbury, this place is five grand under budget. Uh, it's a lovely little house. 
But because we are walking distance into West Didsbury, little is, is the opposite word. But it is beautifully done. Yeah, yes. lovely fireplace, nice doors. Yeah, it's on the market at just under 250,000. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of a good benchmark yeah. for us all about what your budget buys you in the market now yeah. in West Didsbury. This, this room is, is, feels quite small for a dining room and living room yeah. combined. I don't think either of them are feeling the love. They may be feeling claustrophobic, though. Quick, Phil, show them how to make it bigger. So not quite the kitchen diner <laughs> that I know you were hoping for. No, it is quite small, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. However, it does have potential. It is, would be possible to extend into the site. I'm subject to planning, but I know other mm. people down the street have done it. Okay. But in the short term, could you live with this? Gut feel is I think I'd find it quite hard to live in such a small space. This is what their money gets them in their top area, but it seems a small house means big problems for me. When you get yeah. a double bed in here, how big do you think it'll feel then? That'd be quite, yeah, that'd be quite constricted. Well, unfortunately, it sounds like this is a, a non-starter. Uh, they've written it off pretty much straight away. I can find houses, but I'm not a magician. I can't just make them cheaper. I always thought you carried a wand in that suit, Phil. Come and join me out here. Nice little south-facing garden. How am I doing? I think it's, it's in a very nice location. Mm -hmm. I think we'd struggle to live in the downstairs. I'm not sure there's enough room there, particularly with the kitchen. You guys started by saying location is the priority. You've seen what your money buys you in Didsbury. Yeah. yeah. It's not quite big enough. So let's go off and explore other areas and other things and other styles. Yeah. And you might decide, actually, no, Disbury is really important. Let's get back to Disbury and, and make other sacrifices. Yeah. yeah. OK. Fair? Sounds good. Yeah, lovely. Come on in. I hope you're going to pull something better than a small white house out of your hat, Phil. Well, if this search doesn't improve, I may need to find a glamorous assistant for immediate help. We're in Manchester helping two couples desperate to upsize. Sarah and Claude want to ditch their tiny rental flat, but does their cash match their criteria? Catherine and Andrew want a renovation project, but they're going to have to be quick off the mark if they're going to pip the builders to the post. After Sarah and Claude's first viewing in their number one location of Didsbury, it's clear they can't afford the room they crave here. I think I'd find it quite hard to live in such a small space. Catherine and Andrew are also trying to find themselves a bigger next home by bagging a renovation project. But even in the more affordable parts of the city, decent projects are like hen's teeth. Lucky the mother hen of house hunting has strutted into their search then. And I hope I'm off to a flying start, east of the city in Ashton under Lyne. Nestled in the foothills of the glorious Pennines, there's lots of green space here for Dexter the dog and a decent commute for Andrew. Catherine isn't convinced on this location, but I hope the cracking house I've found will win her over. Here we are. <gasps> First impressions. It looks really good. I really mm. like the detail around the front door. Oh, it's really, really Loves fantastic. The, the, the road is absolutely road perfect. is lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Excellent. Okie dokie. Very excited. Right. Let's get in. Catherine seems to have seen past the postcode already. Let's hope the inside excites her just as much. This home may look stuck in the past, but it has massive future potential. There are three good-sized bedrooms and some wonderful period features that you'd be mad to lose during renovation. There's a great garden with access to a wooded valley, perfect for walks with the pooch. And the splendid outhouse is ideal for Andrew's tool collection and ski boots. On the market at £185,000, they'd have 15 grand to make it fabulous and bring it into the 21st century. Good space. It's really a good space, good space, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. You could literally swing plenty of cats in You here, could there. swing plenty of cats. Yeah. So this is currently the back sitting room. You see through the oh, hatch. Yeah. That's what is currently the kitchen. Wow. The wall that would have to come down is that one. To get the open-plan living space Andrew and Catherine want, it wouldn't be complicated to take out the wall between the kitchen and sitting room to create a fantastically modern room in this old house. So what you'd end up with is a really big kitchen diner with this lovely picture window going to this garden. 
Now, you've got a fence off the bottom of the garden for Dexter, but there's all woodland and everything, which so you can walk out there. That is amazing. Seen <laughs> You've seen enough? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> this is a very good stop. I wasn't expecting such a big reaction. Don't knock it. Oh, look at the fridge! Awesome. <laughs> I know, it's awesome, that fridge, isn't it? And there's lots of original features you could save and make part of the look of the house. Look, you see, look. Oh, Does don't shut your fingers. <laughs> I like the guillotine. <laughs> I wouldn't be putting my head in there if I were you. Fear not, Phil. I think Lady Luck is on my side today. Don't jinx it. It's just a, a, it's a bit of a funny shape at the back. Because obviously the bay on the back of the dining room and then the door comes in and then the bay goes back out again. Yes. You just design the kitchen round it. I think like everything, you just make a feature of the things that make it different. Go and have a look upstairs. So, wildly enthusiastic first reaction, but I'm going to stick my neck out here and say is a little worry that maybe Andrew over-analyses the houses. Not far off. That's what my gut is telling me. And my gut is quite experienced. My gut tells me Catherine's going to do her level best to win Andrew over here. It's huge. Yeah. I love it. I yes. love every bit of mm -hmm. it. I really, really do. And I want to keep those windows. That's not actually ours yet. <laughs> it is. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> Catherine is certainly love-struck. What do you think, having seen upstairs? Excellent. Really? Really, really, really good, yeah. There's no denying that this has been an outstanding start. But let's see if I can better it. Well, I have to better my sorry start with Sarah and Claude to give them the space they want for the budget they have. We're leaving their beloved Didsbury and heading to Sale, another of South Manchester's popular suburbs. More up and coming than up and come Didsbury, it may be good value, but also has the bars, cafes and independent shops the pair want. As well as some very helpful locals. I've just been looking at a house round the corner from here. What, okay. what's, it, what's it like round here? Um, it's lovely down? round here. I chose Sale for numerous reasons. Um, lovely people. Is there a close community feeling? Yes, there is. Uh, particularly since I took over the shop, you can feel how people want to be in the community. This area offers everything they've asked for, and I'm excited to show Sarah and Claude the sizeable three-bedder I've found. I know, Claude, but you were very specific about it not being a terrace. Yeah. I hope I'm not stretching things by being an end of terrace. Yes. Yeah, I can get over the terrace. It's <laughs> practically a sound detached, so... Initial thoughts of being in sale? We like sale. Yeah. We sort of viewed a few properties um, in sale. You get slightly more for your money. Yeah. Which is what we're after, isn't it? We need some space. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I think I've got it. Come on. <laughs> it's not just Didsbury we're leaving behind. They're a house-proud bunch in sale, you know. And the owners here have something to be proud of. This is a good-looking house with almost 50% more space than the last place. With two reception rooms, three bedrooms and a side extension, they'll have more rooms than they know what to do with. And it doesn't stop there. There's fantastic outdoor space. It's also 25 grand under budget, which will hopefully be enough to make sure they're sold on sale. Now, as it stands, it's not a kitchen diner right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it could very, very easily become one. There's a serving hatch there through to the dining room, so this could so easily be taken out. Just pop next door and you see what I mean. Ah. Well, this is the first of three reception rooms. Oh, right, wow. OK, yeah. seems like quite a lot of space. Yeah. This is on the market at 225,000. Right. I thought it was going to be more than that, actually. I thought it'd probably be up to 240, 245 marks, so that shocked me a bit. <laughs> I'd say I'm more shocked by those red socks. Curtis and I often say that people make their minds up after about 10 seconds of being in a house. What's your gut saying to you now? I'm intrigued. I just want to see more. I'm interested to see what upstairs is like. Yeah. He's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to be smiling because he's in sale in its end of terrace. And he's doing his best. I do smile occasionally. <laughs> Does that smile mean they're beginning to think outside the Didsbury box? It's a really good size. Yeah, I like this. Well, obviously, 
a far more positive viewing on my hands here. I mean, they came to me and said location was the absolute priority, but inside of one viewing, I managed to move the goalposts and it's going really well. They can see themselves living here. Mind you, experience suggests that uh, it's not all done yet. Experience isn't everything, Phil. This is quite nice, isn't it? Isn't it lovely? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's certainly nice outside. Yeah. yeah. Having three reception rooms downstairs is fantastic. I think the bedrooms upstairs are a good size as well. I'm not hearing many negatives. I think we yeah. like it. I think it's opened our eyes and didn't realise we could get all that space for that little money. Yeah. They may not have any negatives, but I'm afraid I do. I'm led to believe there was an offer made on the house this morning. OK, yeah. I've got other things lined up to show, show you, but if you do make a decision, then we shouldn't hang around. Yep, none of us can afford to hang around in this market. With Catherine and Andrew, we need to move fast before developers snap up all the best projects. I've brought them to Breadbury to test how much of a property challenge they're willing to take on. Unlike the last area, this is one of the couple's top locations. Andrew, we have bust a gut searching for a property in this area. We have managed to find one £20,000 cheaper than the one we saw this morning. Okay. I feel a butt coming on. There is a butt. Someone got in this house and decided to do a bit of work to it. And now it looks like an episode of DIY SOS. This place requires a huge leap of faith. But if Catherine and Andrew can see past the fact that it's been abandoned mid refurb. No, 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 no. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It could become a lovely home. They'll have to put their renovation money where their mouths are. But it has the space they're looking for with three bedrooms and an open-plan kitchen diner. There's a garden, plus nearby woodland for walks with Dexter. And as it's 20 grand less than property one, that's a great find. I'm going to stick to the positives. Good staircase. Not the nice openness of the other house today. No, 20 grand cheaper, though. 20 grand cheaper. Yeah. You know think, what, even I think, if... It... I think the word you're looking for, actually, is no. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yes. Catherine's making her feelings clear, but I hope engineer Andrew can see the potential. £20,000 is obviously a lot of money, but you can see straight away where, where that money is or is not in, in this case. <laughs> the garden the is rubbish. It's overlooked. Ouch! They really can't see past the challenges of this house. But that does leave a positive. It just shows that the house we saw this morning is a very, very lucky find. Yeah. Yes. And... In a way, I'm almost glad that you've shown us this because we were telling you how difficult our search was and how we've stressed and we've been doing this for all this time and then the first one you show us is that and you start saying, well, what's the problem? It's there and then... No, I is... wasn't saying, what's no. the problem? No, no, no. I'm not doing it to prove a point because you could have walked in here and gone, I love a challenge. Yes, I'm going to blow that £20,000. Yes, Kirsty, but they didn't. And that means that this viewing is over. Well, at least we've got one house in the running. But if I'm going to give them a choice, I need to do a bit better. This week, we're leaving no stone unturned in Manchester, where I'm searching for Claude and Sarah, who are struggling to find their dream home in exactly the right southern suburb. And I'm sorting good from the bad in a quest to find the perfect doer-upper for Catherine and Andrew. So far, the doer-upper with dated decor and Ashton Underline has really got their hearts racing. Amazing! <laughs> You've seen enough? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> so I'm feeling a tad smug that I've got one solid smasher. South of the city, I'm also feeling chipper as I lifted Sarah and Claude's spirits with my big bargain in sale. I didn't realise we could get all that space for that little money. With one strong contender, I think it's time to take a risk. Staying in sale, I'm taking my space-seeking couple to a modern townhouse, something they've not previously considered, but it offers the most square footage yet. I wanted to show you this, and I, I really doubt you'll ever fill this house. Yeah. Okay. It's unlike anything we've looked at before. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to keep an open mind, I think, on this. Yeah. Let's get in. No. 
With a bit of vision and creativity, this super spacious place could become stunning. The living room is vast, light and airy. There are three double bedrooms, three bathrooms, off-street parking, a garage, and to top it all off, there's a roof terrace perfect for partying. And even better for money man Claude, it's 15 grand under budget. So we've got a kind of standard townhouse configuration with the living room up on the first floor. It's lovely and bright at the front of the house. It's a bit dark at the back of the house. There is the kitchen, which, depending on your thoughts, could be opened up, or all this could come out. Yeah. But it could be opened up right into here. Yeah. Ooh. Easy peasy. Yeah, what do you think? I'm not 100% at the moment. Sarah, what, what are your thoughts? I'm just not sure. Um, and I'm trying to just see past the lack of furniture and stuff. Yeah. The thing with the character house is, is, the, is the features and the personality are there. Mm. With somewhere like this, you've got to put it in. I think, for me, it feels a bit too much like a flat. It, it feels very similar to what we're in now. With all this space over three floors, it's really not a flat, Claude. Maybe the bedrooms will woo him. I think you've got the size, haven't you? There's no individuality at all, is there, None whatsoever. in any of these rooms? Not doing it for you, is it? Not at the Don't moment. Don't think so. <laughs> all right, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll just finish off. Oh, dear, Phil. I think this one has crashed and burned. So, modern has a work for you, has it? I think it's a, probably a poor example of what modern would be. I think the layout's very clumsy. Yeah. Think, yeah, I think it's shabby. I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Consider myself told. <laughs> oh, go and get another job. Come on. <laughs> another job as what, exactly? Kick a man while he's down. My gamble might not have paid off this time, but it is a great house, just not for this pair. Why don't you tag along with me and I'll show you how it's done? Because I found a first-class house for Catherine and Andrew calling out for keen renovators. And it's in the leafy suburb of Alcrington, North Manchester. Well, if your couple have the vision, Kirsty, this house could rival property one. And it's somewhere they could add a bit more value. Indeed. Whilst it's not an area they've considered buying in, I think I'm barking up the right tree here. It has plenty of green space and access to the motorway. Well, how are you feeling about this? Nervous. Nervous. What's Sorry. making you nervous? I don't know the area. <clears throat> Aha. Uh, how about the look of the house? Because it's a great big one. It's a fair size, isn't it? It's is a good yeah. size. It's priced to sell. There are three offers on the table. There was, uh, there was a, developer a developer here this morning. This morning. You know, pesky developers. Pesky <laughs> developers. <laughs> this three bed semi has virtually the same layout as property number one, which Catherine and Andrew adored. It has two generous reception rooms, three bedrooms, a pleasant private garden. Oh, and the same potential to create a kitchen diner. And it's 25 grand cheaper than my first place, leaving more money to spruce it up. Your end house with these two properties would be very similar. Yeah. So bay window here, and you'd have to take down that wall yeah. to go into the kitchen. The agents are telling us if you put an attic on the top, and refurbished down here, it could fetch about 250. That certainly got Andrew's thinking cap on, but I'd like to know what's going on in Catherine's head. So upstairs is really very similar, although the bathroom's already as one, unlike the previous house. Oh gosh, it's big. It is big, isn't it? I mean, what what's your gut feeling? It seems really nice. Um, I just don't know what's around. Andrew does know this area and he is, seems to be reasonably reassured about this area. Yeah, and I think we, we've got different standards when it comes to areas. I am more choosy. Different standards are true of many duos. Isn't that right, Phil? Thank you, Kirsty. What I will say is that this is a brilliant investment and Andrew's keen eye has spotted its potential. Ultimately, that, that wall needs to go. The house deserves all of that work, don't it? It could be absolutely spectacular. And gut feel from you at this moment, and I appreciate you haven't seen the whole house. How do they compare? At the, at the minute, it's quite an open field for me. Um, I don't think there's much to choose between the houses, and I think we both need to be happy with the property. Of course. Um, we was both extremely happy with, with yeah. the first one we saw yesterday, so... Uh, has Kirsty been helpful? Very. She's been, she's been talking sense. Superstar, yes. Ooh. Cool. 
Scrap that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the truth hurts, Phil. Andrew may be keen, but can he convince Catherine? Well, it's not overlooked, is it? <laughs> no. I'm thinking still house number one. I know. What's behind there? <laughs> Possibly Narnia. It could be Narnia, Atlantis or the lost city of gold. <laughs> but I doubt that would be enough to sway her. Everything OK with you two? Yeah. Seen enough? I think if we hadn't seen house number one and we would have come straight to this one, then it would have been a definite contender. Everything on paper works, but it just... It's just not the one, so is it? So it works in the head, but not the heart. It's not, it's not the one. House number one is the one. One is on the money and one is going back to one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my cue to leave. But one good turn deserves another. Why don't you come and give me a helping hand on my side? I'm moving Sarah and Claude's search north to Prestwich, an affordable suburb becoming increasingly popular with young professionals and first-time buyers. I want to show my pair what's on offer outside their South Manchester comfort zone, which is risky, but I think I've got a top-notch house in what's rumoured to become the Didsbury of the North. Are you familiar with Prestwich? Um... A little bit. Sort of. Yeah. I've got a friend that lives just up the road from here. I'm, I'm intrigued to know what it's like inside. Let's get in there. Come on. This spacious Edwardian house has beautiful period features throughout. With a splendid open plan living area, three immaculate bedrooms and a large decked garden. Modelled by the resident Moggy. It's also 20 grand under Sarah and Claude's budget. But is all this enough to tempt them north? A, a, a kind of a much grander property yeah. than where we've been. Sarah, you were the one that was particularly after the feeling yeah. and, and a bit of character. This does feel like a home when you walk into it, definitely, compared to the one this morning. Yeah, let's move on from this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike this morning's new build, this place needs very little imagination. Now, the kitchen is beautifully done. It is a very, I think, sizable room. I think it's, um, it's a very nice-looking kitchen. For us, a big thing is that space to be able to socialise, have yeah. people around. Um, yeah. I think you could definitely do that here. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. You can spread out a bit. Yeah. Talking about spreading out. Yep. I was just going to say, <laughs> oh, Phil and I, you see We've been doing this too long. <laughs> We've been doing this too long. <laughs> <laughs> Phil and I may be in sync, but is he in sync with Sarah and Claude? <sighs> now, I have to be careful on here, Claude, because this is not designed for these shoes. But <laughs> it is rather nice. It's a very nice space. I like how very there's nice, two levels yeah. to the garden. Well, I think this is a very strong house. And it could grow with you. Yeah. Phil has banned me from talking about future-proofing houses and family and that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, I have. Honestly, I leave you alone for two minutes, also. Well, it is a family house. There's lots of kind of originality and, and, and interest in these rooms. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Is this doing it for you? I got more of the feeling when I walked into this house, I think, than any of the others. Yeah. But, of course, this is a first home. It's not a forever home. Yeah. It's and I think that, that's what we just need to get over almost, is that mm. this is for the next probably five years. Mm. And the next house will be the, the perfect house that we've always wanted. Mm. But moving house is an expensive business, so a longer-term home could be just the right move. I think this place and Property 2 in sale are strong contenders, giving Phil's pair a tough decision. What are you thinking about this compared to the one in sale? I don't know. I keep going either way. It feels yeah. like a, a more grown-up home, I think, this. Kirsty, you bring a new meaning to the same flat house at work. Look at you. <laughs> Taking it easy. I do like the banisters. <laughs> it's such a nice hallway, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like to see them buy this and not just follow the herd. Everybody else is buying in Didsbury and sale. I'm sure they'll listen to you, Phil. Pretty nice if someone did. Hello. Right. How are you getting on up there? It's completely different to what we liked about the house in sale, I think. It gives us something to think about. <laughs> The likelihood is far greater of you outperforming what the general market does if you if you buy up here. Well, that's interesting to know. <laughs> the oracle has spoken. The cheek I have to put up with. <laughs> I feel calmer because I received your wisdom, Phil. <laughs> Back with my pair, Catherine and Andrew, they're also pretty wise. 
and have decided to return to the three-bed semi in Ashton-under-Lyne. I'm really, really pleased we're back here because, listen, it's birds and the sun's come out. You don't have to give it the hard sell. They're clearly smitten. I love this house. As are you. The vendor leaves these lights behind and you don't want them, and these... I'll take the whole set off your hands. Uh, hello. We're not here for you to blag fixtures and fittings, Kirsty. This is about Catherine and Andrew making sure they want to take on the property. This. Yeah. Straight across. Big bathroom. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Andrew's practically got his tool belt on, and Catherine's always been keen. It's a gem. It really is a gem. 100%. Look, I just love this baronial hall. It's got all the original details. Now, I know you're going to get rid of this. There is part of me which is sad. But what I don't want you to do is get rid of these. And if you do, I will drive up to Manchester and I'll pick them up in the back of my car. OK, I think you'd better get out of there before someone strips the place bare. We're all agreed this house is a gem. Now I've just got to make sure I can secure it for them. We're in Manchester, where Catherine and Andrew have fallen head over heels for the fixer-upper in ashton under -Lyne. I love it. I love it. I love every bit of it. I really, really do. And I want to keep those windows. It's not actually ours yet. <laughs> but Sarah and Claude are torn between two. An ideal short-term option in southerly sale. It's a lot more space than certainly I expected. Or one that could last a lifetime, north of the city in Prestwich. This does feel like a home when you walk into it, definitely. Having had the night to mull things over, it's make up their mind time. Long discussions through the night, I imagine. Um, yes, indeed. We had quite lengthy discussions about it, and ultimately, I think Sarah kind of ruled out the press which one. Really? Oh, yeah. that, that's not what I was expecting. Was it not? It was beautiful. I loved all the period features, but it almost felt a little too grand for us, I think, at this stage. Okay. <laughs> I'm delighted that that you want to go back to sale. Bye bye, Prestwich House. Sarah and Claude are sold on sale, but with an offer already on the table, we can't hang about. These two love the existing space, but we're keen to create an open-plan kitchen diner, something the current owners have already had plans drawn up for. So th these are not planning permissions or anything, but they yeah. just give us a bit of an idea about some different options. They've looked into obviously removing this one, yeah. which is the easy one. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, the quick win, that's isn't the quick it? Win. Yeah. 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 Do we have any idea on cost then? Um, once you've done all the work and you've redecorated, you've done the floor and the plumbing and the electrics, you're going to be the wrong side of 15 grand. But I do feel that you would be improving the value of the house. Yeah. That is a pretty penny, but this place is in great condition, so they could do the work when they're ready. It's a decent kitchen oh. as it is at the moment, yeah. isn't it? After seven long months of searching, it's up to Sarah and Claude to decide if we've found them the right house. We've had a chat about it, um, and we do want to put an offer in. OK, terrific. Good news. As you know, it's on the market at 225000 and there has been an offer. I think we should just best foot forward. Look, you said you want 225. We're not going to muck around. Here's 225. But I genuinely don't think there's any point elongating the negotiations, because I think you'd lose. Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, I like a decisive <laughs> couple. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We're offering the full asking price, so hopefully this one will go smoothly. Danny, hi there, it's Phil Spencer here. Um, they very much like the house. Uh, but we do understand that there is another party that's interested. Uh, so they're happy to pay the 225000 if the property could be taken off the market as of today. Much appreciated, Danny. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. He certainly appreciates quick decision and he certainly appreciates the fact that you've, you've offered the full price. Yeah. Let's hope the vendors will be just as quick and decisive with their answer. That was quick. Hi, Danny, that was swift. What news? Oh, big intake of breath. Hmm. OK, um, I'll come back to you. Thanks, bye. That is a shock. Uh, um, the owners feel that they have obviously met the, the other people that have been around a few times. They bid first and they want to accept the lower offer. 
from them. I did not see this coming. I can't believe this. That's so strange. Mm. If you're minded to let it go, mm. whether that's on a point of principle or, or because you don't want to pay more, we, we just you guys need to be confident that in letting it go, that you can find something mm. that's better, that's not going to cost you more. Yeah. With prices soaring in Manchester, putting up a fight for this house might save Sarah and Claude money in the long run. What do you think? Hopefully, I'll have a more straightforward time bagging Catherine and Andrew's dream home. The elderly owner no longer lives there, so a quick sale is wanted. Although I've heard there is other interest. On the market at 185,000, how much are these two willing to pay for it? We're not really sure. Um, we're going we to... did want to ask your advice. My feeling is that you could go in at 175 or 177, but there are other interested parties. Mm. Yeah, we don't want lots of two and no. no, 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 this is a, We, this we is want to go in with a fair offer that's realistic for yeah. them and for us. I think 180 is a generous offer. The property is vacant. I think you should make an offer saying that you're happy for them to leave anything in the property that they want to. It makes you the hassle free buyer. Yeah, go for it. Do it. Hi, David, how are you? My clients are very keen on your house and they don't want to muck about. So they've told me they want to offer 180 straight off the bat. They are also happy to take it as seen. Okie doke, well, I will wait to hear from you. Okay, brilliant, okay, bye. For now, it's in the hands of the vendor. In an attempt to win over the vendors of their favourite property, Sarah and Claude have upped their offer to £227,500, two and a half grand over the asking price. They're still of the same opinion. They'd, they'd like to go with the earlier but lower offer. OK. Um, and just w w while we're on the phone, Danny, if I could just ask, ask you to hold a minute. They, they want to continue as they are. Two, three, one. Yeah. Bear, bear with us, Danny. There's some. We'll offer two, three, one, but that's that's a fine. Two, that's three, one. Way, no. Danny, they will offer what I consider to be a premium. They'll offer two, three, one in order to tie this up. This is their top offer, and as high as I'd recommend they go. But it doesn't mean it's going to be enough. And I can only hope Catherine and Andrew's offer of 180 grand is enough to secure their dream doer upper. Hello, David. Right, OK. In the meantime, I will provide all their information with you for the memorandum of sale, and I couldn't be more grateful. Brilliant. Okie doke. Thanks so much. Brilliant, David. Okay. Bye. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what clinched it? You saying you could leave it as it was? Yeah. Taking the house as it was. He said, <laughs> he said it's going to save them so much money not having to clear out the house. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Not at all. We shouldn't really do this with water, but it's good to stay sober when buying houses. <laughs> Clever Kirsty, sound <laughs> advice. But over here with our best and final offer on the table, water won't cut it. Hi, Danny. We're very anxious at this end. How did you get on? OK. <sighs> They'll accept two, three, one. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, my gosh. Thank you very much indeed for all that you've done. Big size for me. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Cheers. Oh. Oh. God, God dear. I'm relieved. For what it's worth, you've done exactly what you needed to do. You fought for it and you've won the Zag. And I would have done the same. Cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Seven weeks later, and having met the vendors face to face, Sarah and Claude obviously made an impression because they managed to get the price down. So the price that we agreed on was 229 and 250. Um, all quite amicable and we all sort of celebrated over some Prosecco afterwards. But now, with the survey done, they think the house needs some work. So they're negotiating with the vendors once again. I do want the house. Um, it's just got to be the right price. Having made the mental shift beyond Didsbury, this is not a house they want to let go. The thing that Phil did was open our eyes a little bit, sort of broader than Didsbury, just to show us what else we could get for our money. So finally, we've managed to find something that we both like um, and that hopefully we'll be able to secure. And Catherine and Andrew have also dabbled in a little APRE survey renegotiation. The valuation meant the vendor accepted 175,000, five grand less than their initial offer. Things are now progressing smoothly and they're hoping to have the keys within a month. Once we get the keys, I think we'll literally be bouncing about the place, yeah. won't we? And once the bouncing stops, the renovations will have to start. We are not keeping that horrendous <clears throat> cladding in the hallway. I'm sorry, Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I forgive you, and don't forget I'm coming to collect any unwanted features. Cladding aside, the property's a great find. It's absolutely perfect. It's just what we wanted. We aim to please.